Time for another five minute ish review. This time I want to talk about two movies 1981's My Bloody Valentine and a 2009 remake of the same name. Let's start with the original. It's 1981 and the slasher genre is in full swing. 1974's Texas Chainsaw Massacre and 1978's Halloween set the template for the genre, giving us memorable and easily recognizable villains. Studios big and small, as well as independent filmmakers, did their best to create their own murderous individuals to capitalize on the craze. In a small Canadian mining town on Valentine's Day, a tragic mine accident kills all involved but one, who was driven insane by the event. Harry Warden takes his vengeance out on the men he considered responsible. He is caught and institutionalized, but blaming the men's rush to get to the annual Valentine's Day dance as the cause for their negligence, he swears that if the town ever again holds the dance, he'll return and lives will be lost. The town erases Valentine's Day from their calendars. Though after 20 long years, they decide to hold the dance once again. It isn't long before the killings start, and everyone thinks Harry Warden is making good on his threats. Wearing a gas mask, overalls, and wielding a pickaxe, the killer fits the mold set by the likes of Halloween and its predecessors. The obligatory group of young people, though very, very late 70s, early 80s young people, become the targets. One man who had left town years ago for unknown reasons has returned, and suspicions naturally fall on this outsider. The kills are creative at times and mundane at others, but it all adds up to a fun early 80s slasher. Obviously, the killer isn't Harry Warden. Sorry if that spoils it for you, but I think we're all used to this sort of thing, and the film makes it pretty clear that there's someone else to blame. What stands out for me about that, however, is the apparent neglect to come up with any reasonable explanation as to who the killer really is. Oh, we have a culprit in the end, but why he did it is revealed in the last few minutes of the film and come across as an afterthought. It's almost as though the director said, cut and print, and then realized they had no unveiling. Fire the cameras back up, he might have said. We need two more minutes. What they filmed and the explanation given made no sense to me. I get what they were trying to do, but I just don't feel it worked. B- minus for the effort? The 2009 remake follows the same basic plot outline, but throws in an extra red herring on who the killer really is. And this is a nice improvement over the original. The deaths are as creative as the original, and have the added edge of being done with 3D in mind, but suffer from some weak CG. The obvious computer graphics took me out of the moment immediately, and when you get thrown out of the fantasy that hard and fast, it is difficult to get back in would have been so much better with a good makeup and practical effects team on set. As far as the final reveal of the killer, well, I thought the 1981 version made no sense. 2009's is even worse in that they really don't give the killer any cause to do what he did. They try and work in a multiple personality as the cause, but why that personality manifested itself is as much a mystery as anything. Maybe this was an homage to the original. They spend so much of the film trying to throw suspicions back and forth between the two lead males that I wonder if they actually had two endings at the ready, each with the two different leads pegged as the killer. A few test audiences later, and we get the ending we got. Both films are worth watching just for mindless mayhem and deaths. Just don't expect anything more and go in knowing you were warned. Watching them might be a bit troublesome. The 81 version is available with a subscription on HBO Max, and the 2009 is available with an Amazon Prime subscription, but isn't on HBO. Both are rentable via Amazon and Apple TV and a variety of other services, so you can watch them, but it might cost you a few extra bucks. Follow the link in the show notes to any of our social media locations and leave a comment or drop an email to timeshifterspodcast at gmail.com to let me know what you think of either or both of these horror slashers. I look forward to hearing from you. 